Well everyone, welcome to what's probably going to be the second to last of the episodes of the Lithuania Project. Before we get into everything, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to every single person who's clicked on the video and watched it at some point, given a like, given a, one of those really, really helpful comments that I've been getting on these videos. The support for the series has been absolutely incredible. Um, I did check. I know it's a bit cliche to say, but 70%, over 70% of my viewers have not subscribed to this channel. So if you guys go ahead and do that, that would be absolutely incredible because it would really help me push forward to make more content that I think is really interesting, whether it just be interesting to me, interesting to you guys. Um, last plug, I've also started... Probably by this point, there'll be two episodes up of uh, the five-year plan with Juventus. I'm not going to go too much into detail about it because I'm assuming most of the people here are in for FM content and not FIFA content. But if you do want to go check it out, make sure you go check it out. It's very interesting. Uh, it's a challenge-based career mode thing. And yeah, let's go straight into it. So... The biggest surprise of them all. The biggest of surprises. So it's been Hagelman and Manesia. Wow. Okay. So we really haven't progressed. So we were, I think, up. We were here. We stayed there. We go up to 28th, 29th, 30th. We might have hit the point where things have just kind of slowed down. I think there's two things that have really done that. I think the fall of Zalgiris has been one of them. And the fact that we really haven't been able to get another team to really come in and either assert dominance like Zalgiris did at the beginning of the save um and the ability to just create uh good players i mean we look here ignis juska looks pretty decent to be fair uh but yeah not not incredible we're just not there so let's take a look then we'll go straight to the nation coefficients and take a look at that so what's been happening over the last five years? We are in the 50-51 season, so things will be a little odd. But starting from here, it's just not been too good coefficient-wise. Um, did okay in, in certain aspects, been better than certain teams around us. But, you know, where Bulgaria had a good season and Romania had a good season and Hungary had a good season, we... We really didn't. Just trying to make sure we're on us. But we've been we've been consistent. We've been probably better than than Hungary, but we really haven't been able to assert ourselves um, as much as we really should. And league reputation wise, we've just kind of hit that level where this is this is where we are um now i'm not sure how to really get in or get out of that kind of limbo phase so we will see what we need to do for that i think part of it is we just don't have a very competitive league in the sense that we don't have as many um teams but we'll go back we'll take a look from here on so this is i think when we started it and then um just go from here hagelman with really really dominant you know and then pretty much out of nowhere not out of nowhere they qualified in third but uh, Manesia 
doing well. I think this could be the start of something, assuming that that Hagelman and Munisha are like competitive, because it is first and second, it seems, for the most part. Uh, their captain is Lithuanian, though I'm assuming probably came from Brazil. Um, not a terrible player, to be fair, for an attacking mid. Let's take a look then at the schedules of a few of these teams, see where they're going um, in this season. To be fair, Europa League has been a thing. We've been we've been in the Europa League. Is it season? Yeah. We have been in the Europa League. To be fair, and that's a that's a hard group. Celtic, Bayern, Lazio. That's not a it's not an easy group to get past. Um and and next season another Europa League group. Again finishing bottom, but doing better again very very hard europa league group so two europa league groups pretty good euro 2 group i think these are where the euro 2 groups are where we really need to be qualifying and and doing quite well better than braun be better than uh partizani from albania is very good um knocked out by trabzonspor so not, you know, not not the worst, uh, but then getting knocked out by Partizan. That's the issue, is we need to, we need to get more consistent and on that type of level. Um, so here, again, they were champions here. So champions qualification, but getting knocked out in the third qualifier by Dynamo, um, putting us in the Euro Cup playoff against Astana which put us into group F of the competition here. And we did qualify out of it, um, just barely over a few teams, I, Aris and uh, Olympia. So, you know, a little worse than Hamburg, but better just based on on goal difference and i'm assuming head to head uh, against some of these teams so so hagelman have actually done quite well for themselves um we actually have a consistent european team that isn't just going out immediately in competitions i'll, I'll take a look at uh, mania but they'll they probably start about here but yeah i mean victoria Plzen, yeah sure but Euro Cup, Group F, not terrible. Is it the next season? Oh no, it was, okay, that's that season. Three draws against um, Alborg, Borussia Dort, or Borussia Mönchengladbach, and, and Tottenham Hotspur. So, you know, as far as the group goes, it's a very hard group. Probably would have expected a little bit more but you can't get everything and then coming here not doing well csk sofia i feel like we're at a point now where these are the types of teams we should be beating because beating those teams are what's going to help us in the future we need uh Ambanga and shanova kind of fallen off yeah, I saw. I, I was kind of thinking about that. They've really fallen off, so we won't take a look at them. But Bunga, they've been kind of up and about, so we'll take a look at them. We really need at least two or three, but not really two teams that... Well, we need one team that's going to be always in Europe. We need then a team that's going to um, always like or most always going to qualify um again not really doing too well with the qualification i know i'm going back but just getting caught out by 
by like the second or third qualifying rounds. Uh, looks more like the third qualifying round for the fourth here, but again, it's just not good enough from Banga. We need a team to be able to get in. I know that last one was against AZ Alkmaar. Uh, we'll take a look quickly if we go to the stages. Yeah, we'll take a look at some of the other leagues so you can kind of see what's been happening for the last few seasons of teams kind of going up and about. But it's kind of the same few teams constantly going up and down which is getting a little frustrating, I think. Um, but, yeah. It's definitely getting a bit frustrating, but we will, we will see. So we'll take a look at Lithuania again. Um, they're actually on the rise. So Lithuania is on the rise. We've actually, that is interesting. So we'll, we'll take a, a closer look at that. Because I think we were about, well, we were about here, really. And then we've been slowly going up recently. I think we were about here, and then we've been going up. So that's really good. Um, I think we'll go bottom to top. So Ivanuskas came through at a lower tier club. And, I mean, hey, it's decent. Uh, wanted by someone, by Toronto. We're at that level where MLS clubs want us, though. Which I don't think's great. Uh, Welthon at Tel Aviv from Banga. Hegelman, he's actually a Brazilian player initially. Um, nothing special, but decent. Mauricio, another, I'm assuming, is one of those, um, yeah, Brazilian exports. We have a lot of those. Pretty decent player for the leagues, but not nothing special. This guy's gone up, um, Bikauskas, and I think I remember looking at him. He's actually done quite well for himself, and he's not a great player, but... Scoring pretty consistently in Poland. $3.4 million deal. He's done he's done quite well. 100 goals for over 100 appearances for Leggy is quite good. Now we've got uh, Mindaugas Ivaniskas. So this is the guy who was at Roma for a while. And so he clearly didn't, he wasn't able to break into that Roma team. And when he did, he didn't perform. So he's gone to Galatasaray on a free. So we'll take a look real quick. Did he? Because he had high potential, I think. Um, but uh, well, 162. But you know, he's not. He's not hit that potential. Rukas, uh, Locosinus, I think, also at Roma, but initially at Genova. Went to Roma. Went to PSG. 68 million holy mother of all things good in the world this guy is absolutely insane yeah well we have a good player at lithuania that's consistent and he's 24 like this guy could quite frankly just get better um Wow. What a player. Rokas Lukasinas. We'll just call him that. We're going to save his information. Keep history after retirement. Is on. So let's take a look at the national team. We'll take a look. Obviously, I think a potential we'll do first. So we've got this guy, Romas Juska, who is at Arsenal. He didn't come up. He's been bought by Arsenal. He's playing games, doing quite well. Um, initially from uh, Pac Royce. I don't know. 
went on free to Hagelman, did okay, and has gone to Arsenal. Obviously, we see Rokas. Um, it's the guy Galatasaray, yeah. So then we've got Davide Serafino, who is... Oh, yeah, so he's that... He's the guy who... What is he? Okay, he came in... He came from Napoli, was on loan in Belgium and then Austria for a while, and then went on a free. So he must have been an, a Latvian player coming through in Italy. Not, not great in his last game. Um, Mentas Ivanuskas. I think we looked at him. He's the guy wanted by Toronto. Um, so high potential players. I mean, we've gotten a few now. Um, but national team wise, we're not really looking extremely strong. We've got a few good players coming through. So we'll take a look at the goalkeeper real quick first. Tadas Karsimarks. Mark Skas, who knows? He's at Banga, goal, young goalkeeper. Initially came through um, Dianava. Dianava, we'll say Dianava. So he looks, he looks actually quite nice. Um, good prospect. We've also got uh, Gradimir Militek, who's come through at Siuliai. Uh, Siuliai. Manesian player now, um, young defender, looking great. Uh, and then Barnauskas here, Mania. Is it Mania or Manesia? We'll say Mania. Sounds better probably, but. Winger coming through, looking actually pretty decent. Um, pretty high potential and it's already a good player. We'll take a look at the under 19s just if there's anyone. Usually in the under 19s you don't find too many. But Scott Garrett. Well, where are you from? You are All right, eligibility is Lithuania. Born in Lithuania, speaks Fluent Russian and basic English. I don't understand this guy. Um, but there you go, Scott Garrett. Where was he again? He was at... Uh, ah, names I can't say, but he is decent. Um, and there's no one else really too much note that would be super, super interesting. All right. I think it's time now to take a look at um, the games we've played here. I know I'm not taking a look too much at transfers and manager movements. I'm more interested in Lithuania right now than anything else. So we'll take a look. So we've got Division C. Again, third division. So take a look at that. Go to this one. Finishing second. To be fair, that's not that bad. Above Montenegro, one point off of Greece. One loss over a draw from Greece. If we drew that game, potentially. Uh... Euro qualifiers, Serbia, Turkey, Belarus, Albania, just not, it wasn't going to happen. We did beat Albania, though, drawing Belarus. I'm assuming we'll start to look a bit better soon. Though we probably got relegated from that group. Um, looks like it, though we couldn't get relegated, but that's that was a poor showing. Um, and then the World Cup qualifiers. Where did we... They never show what I want to see, do they? Never. Yeah, the this European qualifiers, this is another Division C. 
and we finished top of it over Northern Ireland, Israel, and Cyprus. And to be fair, we smashed them. So we've clearly improved in that regard. Um, European Championship qualifying, we, we have Belarus, Bulgaria, Sweden, Turkey. Probably won't finish above Turkey or anything like that. Um, if we can go down here, we can see what the groups were here. Where we were. We finished bottom. Yeah, that was not a good showing from us. We finished bottom. Wow. Hesse is our captain, a very um, obvious name for a player from Lithuania, obviously, at Qatar. Anyway, all right. Pretty good. I wonder, actually, so the manager is this guy. We'll take a look at the managers. If any of these people are players, you know, we'll take a look at you. So you were the manager coming through the ranks, and actually. And you're a regen manager that started. Yeah, that's interesting. Very, very interesting. All right, let's take a look at the uh, World Cup. We'll just start with the World Cup and then go from there. Holders are Brazil. Portugal won it since we last saw it, and then Brazil won it most recently. Taking a look at the Euros. Portugal won that one. We only had to look at one team there. And then at the Champions League, it is Atletico Madrid holding currently. Um, Bayern Munich won it. So, so actually Liverpool, Bayern Munich, Man City, PSG, Atletico Madrid uh, were the winners. And then if we go down to the Europa League, Borussia Dortmund, Chelsea, PSG, AC Milan, and Tottenham Hotspurs won it. Decent amount of like interesting teams though in and around there our favorite competition to look at the so it's Lokomotiv Moscow Sporting CP Ajax Roma and Sociedad again we're just not getting there um and that's getting quite annoying I think the closest we we've come in the in Europe is a semi-final in the Europa League 2 and things need to change we're going to do one last episode. Hagelman is, I would say, probably the best team right now in, 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 in this country. Now, you see this reputation, it can go quite up. So we're going we're gonna to boost their reputation. They are now a reputable club. They are a continental club. See that finances right there? They've got negative 2 million. We're going to give them 12 million. No, 102 million. Facilities are actually still okay. They've actually got a 30,000 seater stadium. That's actually really cool. We should take a look at stadiums. They're now a, a continental team. We will see. We will see by the end of the next episode if by doing that, Hegelman become a superpower. Now, Zalgiris. Team's not been doing too great. They're, they're, they're kind of down in the dumps right now. I want to see them on the rise again. We're going we're gonna to put them up to 6,000 here. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna flush away the debt. We're gonna give them fifty million. All right, and and hopefully that that helps them. They're now back up to national reputation. Can they bring back their former glory? And then Mania because they they look 
probably the most promising as well. We're going to put them up to 700 reputation. We're going to give them, they've actually got a decent amount of money. They've got 1 million. We're going to give them 90 million. Can these three teams do it? Actually, you know what? We're going to need a fourth team. Saduva, you've been kind of up and down, but you've been okay. You did win the league. All right, you boys. I'll do about the same as Zalgiris. About the same as Zalgiris. You guys get 50 million. All right, we've got now four teams. They should all be competing from just that alone. Can we see this? I am not going to simulate to a specific date. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this on overnight or something like that and just have it holiday and see what happens. Usually one season takes about 45 minutes to an hour depending on how much I have open. So if I leave pretty much just this open, I could easily simulate about 10 seasons to 15 seasons in the future. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. And then from there, I think... I'll just simulate to whenever the nearest um, or when the Champions League is, is over. So I think May 31st is like that point of whatever year that is. So the league itself will be kind of still in play, but we'll take a look at that. And then um, if the first video is on 10 likes, by the time I upload this not this video, but episode 11, so the final episode, um, I will put the uh, some type of file save for it into the um, description of, of the first video, probably, or the last one. Maybe I'll do both um, so people can take a look and see for themselves kind of what's going on. So... Yeah, if you enjoyed, if you're ready for the final episode coming up next uh, episode, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. But if you're if you're interested in that, make sure you go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.